Hey, hey, Ralph here. Uh, welcome back to the uh, Moodle Tip of the Week. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, real-time interactive quizzing with our students. You know, one of the challenges when you're delivering a course online is uh, generating uh, student engagement uh, and interacting uh, with the uh, students in uh, real time. And uh, what I found is I found the uh, the interactive or what we call the active quiz plugin. And this allows me to uh, conduct a interactive quiz during my course. Uh, students love it. In fact, when I forget to do the, uh, I call them knowledge checks with the students, they always like remind me <laughs> or, if I, or the next day they'll be like, hey, we forgot to do the knowledge check. I mean, so this has been a really, really good thing in terms of uh, student engagement and allowing them to uh, participate uh, in Moodle. Now, this is a uh, an additional plugin. It's not part of the default Moodle installation, so you'll have to get the uh, the Active Quiz plugin installed out on your Moodle server before you can use it. But what I thought I'd do is I thought I'd do a uh, a demo here of how it works, and then I would go through the process of uh, creating uh, an interactive quiz and talk a little bit about the things that I've you know lessons learned and things like that uh, along the way. So here we have a uh, one of my Moodle courses, and as I mentioned. Uh, I tend to, let me go to this one actually, I use this interactive quiz format with my what I call a knowledge check and so once we, I always have my students take a pretext uh, before we do uh, the lecture on a particular subject then I'll, then I'll do the lecture and then at the end of the lecture we'll quickly just reach out and do this quick knowledge check and again it helps me Sometimes there's things I forget to talk about that show up in the knowledge check, and so I can complete the lecture, if you will. Uh, other times, when I, you know, allows me to see that students aren't tracking on a particular concept, and so, you know, again, I'll stop and do a little bit more lecture. But from the instructor side, so in this case, I'm the instructor. What I would do is I would, you know, instruct my students to go out to the knowledge check. From the instructor, what you'll do is you'll give it a session name. I just call them KC for knowledge check. Typically, I always anonymize uh, student responses, but I don't do full uh, anonymize because I want them to see their score. I want to be able to see their score as well to see how they're tracking. And then plus, I also use this as part of a participation score uh, that my students get when they take my classes. So here I just say start session. Now I've got another browser session open here. Let me toggle over to that. And I'm logged in as a student account into the uh, same class here. So I'll go ahead and pick the same knowledge check as the student and then I'll say join quiz. Okay, so this is the student's view uh, on their end. So they click on join quiz and it just says please wait for the instructor to start the quiz. So let's come back to uh, my instructor view and then I'll go ahead and select start quiz. Now you'll notice that now it says it's going to push the question out I'm going to go back to the student view here, and the student gets the question. And so the device where information terminates and originates, uh, this is actually one of the trickier questions because there's multiple sort of potential right answers, but that's a good discussion too to have about you know analyzing exam questions. Now on the instructor side, let me come back there, you'll see that the default is to show the responses in real time. So I always click on this button that says hide responses so the other students can't see. Uh, another thing that you're going to want to uh, indicate uh, to uh, the students is that their answers are going to be randomized in a different order so they can't look at your screen and pick A, B, C, D, or E. Now you'll see here that the question the default here is a 30 second timer. Uh, I can then show responses once the question has finished and that will show me the answers and the right answers. Now click back over here to the student view. Feedback for the question. Please wait for the instructor to start the next question. There's no feedback. So this particular question doesn't have any feedback, but they're seeing my screen and they're seeing the, uh, the correct answer. Uh, again, before I go on, I hide the responses. Again, the default is to display them, but once you click the hide response button, you can just toggle back and forth. And I don't like the answers necessary to be appearing in real time uh, for uh, for the students. So at that point, you know, I just say next question and then it pushes out. I'll go back to my student view. Here's what the student sees waiting for the next question. 
site where everyone is connected and most corporate information is stored. I'll go ahead and select the main office and then I'll just click save. As an instructor, you'll see that if all my students have answered, then I can just end the question. I don't have to wait for the full 30 second timer. Uh, again, if it's an easy question, I usually stop the timer at like 15 seconds. But then once I end the question manually or letting the timer run out, then we do show responses. And then we look at, and I, you know, as a group, we look at how we did as a group. Remember, it's all um, anonymized, so they don't know who answered what. And if people are getting lots of wrong answers, <laughs> sometimes it's not, a, you know, sometimes it's the question and it's not a really well-worded question. But other times it's like you can just tell, you know, that your students aren't tracking you can put the brakes on and then you can kind of do a quick little lecture about you know that particular topic uh, so you know my students like I said I mean students love this they love the ability to uh, interact work as a group do things in real time and as an instructor I love it because again it gives me that immediate feedback once my lecture finishes I can go back and make sure that students are tracking on those core concepts and then I'll just go ahead and click hide response and then next question and we'll go through each of the questions now i'm gonna go ahead and close this session because i think i've given you a pretty good idea about what's going on in terms of how we would use this as an instructor let's go ahead and look at how we would uh, set one of these up so when you close the session you know i just said session is closed this is the student view uh here let me come back to my instructor view and i'm going to go back to one of my retired courses here so that i'm not uh, affecting anything that's you know actively uh, in use and first thing you have to do you know just like anything else in Moodle you got to turn editing on so I'm gonna come up here to the gear I'm using uh, Moodle 3.2 and select turn editing on all right and then I'll just go into uh, let's go lesson one here and I'll select add an activity and the activity that I'm going to add is going to be the active quiz. Okay, so you, again, you have to install the active quiz plugin before you can do this. I always call them knowledge checks. Um, you know, whatever works for you. Uh, and I always do them right after I finish the lecture. So I'll say demo knowledge check. Okay. I can do a further description, but. Here we have the general quiz settings. So the default question time is 30 seconds. I've tried tweaking around with shorter and longer. And you know, there's one reason that a lot of times why things are the default. With a big group, 30 seconds is a good amount of time. You can always stop the question short. I showed you how to do that. So 30 seconds tends to work out pretty well. Sometimes with some complex like binary math questions, the students get mad at me because <laughs> 30 seconds isn't enough time. But generally speaking, for a standard multiple choice question, 30 seconds is you know, more than enough time to answer the question. And so if you get any delays and the questions being pushed out, it works pretty well. Um, the five second wait time. Uh, from a grading standpoint, uh, I usually do uh, assess, uh, but again, and I, I usually select highest session, even though we probably don't do them multiple times very often in many of my classes. I don't, uh, I don't actually use the grades as part of my calculation, to be completely honest, um, in terms of the students' grades. But I want them graded because I do use it for a participation score uh, that I use in the class. Um, you know, you got some grouping options allowing you know students to work in groups. I don't really do much with that. Um, the review options, so they review after. So if your questions have feedback, the students will uh, see that feedback. Um, from a uh, completion standpoint, you know I do uh, track completion, uh, so that you know on some of them I track completion, and basically usually the completion I use is just that they get a grade which basically means that they did it you know that they uh, participated now when I select save and display we don't have a quiz yet we don't have any questions so in order to add questions here with active quiz you just click on edit questions uh, come out here to your question bank and you would click pick your topic area now a couple pieces of advice um, you know multiple choice questions uh, obviously work the best and 
also multiple choice questions that have um, short answers you know so like terms as the potential answer just from a displaying of the graphing information and things like that uh, it's a little bit cleaner if you have short answers certainly not a requirement but so I could come out here and you know if I want to say algorithm used by EIGRP sure and again add it to your quiz you just simply click on the plus button here and then you can do a proprietary timer for your question so if you have like a complex math question or something like that you could bump it up to a minute or you could say no time limit okay and then you simply just click add question and then it's there it's part and then you go in through and you know for uh, module reviews or knowledge checks if you will uh, I typically toggle back and forth between you know five to ten questions kind of depending on the class the length of the module uh, and that sort of thing I do like consistency so in any particular course I typically always have the knowledge checks five questions six questions ten questions but you know whatever works for you uh, from that standpoint and again you can go anywhere in your question bank and grab questions once you have all the questions you want then you're good okay. so once I have the questions you'll see here that I'll go back to view quiz and at this point now I'm ready to roll okay now that I have questions I can just go ahead and go back to my course and then if I scroll down here there's my demo knowledge check when I click on it as an instructor I can go ahead and get it started so yeah this has been a really really positive thing for interactivity levels with my students students really enjoy this um, if you have the option of getting the active quiz plugin for your Moodle site and you teach live online integrating with Moodle then uh, I highly highly recommend that you use uh, this tool again it's been been a real boom for me and my classes so I hope that helps um, again if you have any questions feel free to shoot me an email if you enjoyed the video go ahead and give me a like and I plan on adding a lot more content to this particular channel so uh, please subscribe